Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Patrick Badger, a master's student at Kansas State University. So Patrick, before we start, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so I'm originally from Southern Indiana, um, grew up showing hogs and cattle uh, in 4-H and kind of started out my passion really uh, focusing on pigs. And that took me to Purdue where I was an animal sciences major with a concentration in production. Um, and so I spent my four years there at Purdue and realized I wasn't uh, done with school and wanted to continue on and continue my education. And that brought me out here to Kansas State where I joined the feed science and management team. And so currently a lot of my research is focusing on pellet mill electrical fit efficiency, uh, pellet quality, and then the effects of pellet quality on grow finished pigs. Awesome. So speaking of some of that work that you've been doing with the pellet quality, um, I looked at some of the papers that you sent and um, looking those over. So start us off. Um, what has your work at KSU uh, really shown in terms of uh, pellet quality and fines? So looking at pellet quality, we know uh, pellet quality matters and we know the benefits of pellet uh, pelleting hog feed. But what we really wanted to show was um, where you can really focus in on really narrowing down your pellet quality and meeting certain specifications about when, what phase in um, the finisher you could really try to bank on and hit um, and try to minimize those pellet fines and what phases you might be able to try to push through the pellet mill a little bit faster, increase your throughput if you need to hit certain uh, production quotas for the day. So we really wanted to figure out in that grow finish time period where you could focus on that pellet quality and what would be the most beneficial. So for this study, um, we, it was kind of set up as a kind of like a titration. Um, we had five treatments, so we would have our mash control. And then we also ended up pelleting all the other feed and screened all of it. And it ended up, uh, we would set off our mash feed, we'd have our set pellet feed, and then we would go back and we actually crumbled the rest of it to, to make a mechanically created pellet fine. And we took that out to the farm and it would actually get blended in with the feed logic system at specified ratios. So we would have our mash control, we'd have a screen pellet treatment, and then we would blend those pellet fines in at uh, either 25%, 50%, or 75% of the total feed. And that would be blended with pellets. And so we tried to, to show what that pellet quality actually looks like once it gets to the farm and what you could expect in performances whenever you had those different uh, pellet quality specifications and amount uh, in terms of the amount of fines that are showing up at the farm. And so this study was um, kind of set up to show what it would look like in three different weight ranges. So those first weight ranges would be from about 100 pounds, 95 to 100 pounds up to about 150. We then had a 10-day washout period and then re-randomized the treatments back to the pens and fed them for another 20 to 21 days and another 10-day washout period. And then we fed them again for another 20 uh, days. And so we really just wanted to try to wash out any of those residual pellet effects and make sure that we had a good starting point for each of those um, weight ranges. And so with that, we re like I said, we really wanted to show what it looked like at each phase or I guess weight range and see if there's more benefits to feeding one a higher quality pellet than, the, than any of the other phases. And so when looking at it, um, going into our results, we're actually picking up anywhere between an additional 10% fines to about 15% fines, um, depending on the treatment. And it was pretty consistent throughout. So uh, we were picking up about an extra 10 to 12% fines in our screen pellet. And that was carried out across through all the treatments, just from the pellet breakdown from the uh, loadout bin to the feed mill truck, to the bins, through the feeding system, and then into the actual uh, feeders themselves. We didn't see any average daily gain responses or um, average daily feed intake responses for the first weight range of pigs, which would have been from about 195 pounds to about 150 pounds. But we did pick up uh, improvement in feed efficiency whenever you were looking at the screen pellet 
uh, treatment compared to that of the MASH treatment. So there was a linear effect in the feed efficiency with uh, the increasing amount of percent fines linearly decreasing your feed efficiency. And it was pretty much the opposite of average daily feed intake with your higher amount of fines inclusion having a, a higher amount of uh, feed intake. And so as those percent fines decreased at the feeder, you had a linear effect in decreasing average daily feed intake. And then when moving into the second ex uh, experiment, which would be from about 180 pounds to about 235-ish pounds, um, again, we saw no differences in average daily gain across any of those treatments, but we did pick up a uh, significant improvement in feed efficiency, again, for that screen pellet um, compared to that of the mash. And just like the previous phase, we had a linear effect in the average daily feed intake and that in the uh, feed efficiency as well. But then when moving into experiment three, which would be from about 260 pounds up to about, these pigs got big, they got up to be about 315 on, pounds on average. Um, we again didn't see any average daily gain responses um, and no significant average daily feed intake responses. But when looking at the feed efficiency, we saw that same uh, improvement in experiment three, where the screen pellets significantly improved feed uh, feed efficiencies, but that was carried out to uh, treatments that had uh, up to 40, uh, let's see, this one had about 42% pellet fines at the feeder. So we had a significant improvement in pelleted treatments up to about 40% fines with a tendency for an improvement up to, let's see, 65% fines in this last weight range. So we had some pretty good results, I felt like, in looking at this and really showing where, where we can look at improving our pellet quality and where we can really focus that in and what what weight ranges we can kind of focus on getting the amount of production out of the feed mill as what we need. Gotcha. So um, one question I had um, was, did you look at any ec uh, economics or income over feed costs for any of these diets for pelleting compared to a mash? Uh, yes, we did. Um, within that first weight range, which just the say those weight ranges again, it went from about 95 pounds up to about 150. Uh, we had no differences in economics compared to that of the mash for any of the pelleted treatments. Um, but then whenever you look at the second weight range, which would be from about 180 pounds up to about 235 pounds, um, we did have a increase, a significant increase in the total feed cost per pig for the highest fines inclusion rate, which would have been at about 86% of the total feed. Um, so that was significantly increased compared to that of the mash. Um, and then again, we saw a, the same scenario in that third experiment with, uh, the 80, about 84% pellet fines of the feeder having a significantly increased, uh, total feed cost compared to that of the, uh, mash treatment. And then whenever you're looking at income over feed cost, the screen pellets had a significantly improved, um, income over feed cost compared to that of the mass treatment. Awesome. Well, we'll appreciate to hear back about that uh, study as well when you finish that up. But um, I thank you for coming on the show to sharing these results with us. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.